good evening, everyone. Grab a songbook. Let's stand together. We're going to turn to song number 13, number 13. Stand with me and we'll sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. We'll sing the first and the last verse in number 13. <clears throat> On the first verse, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak. But thou art mighty, hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Verse number three. When I tread the verge of Jordan, just fear subside bear me through the swelling current land me safe on Canaan's side songs of praises songs of praises I will ever give to thee I will ever give to thee Amen that's good singing tonight you did a good job but there's a great goal fixed between us you know when I first Wayne and Dawn do you remember when I first came to the church that I roped off the back of the church about put our church into cardiac arrest uh, but I was a young preacher fearless uh, in those days I would never do that again now, I might have a sister pastor do it and say I told him not to do that but uh, again, you are typical Baptist. Get as far out of the spit as you can. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate it. Again, we're glad you're here. And a year ago today, Jesse Calvin went home to be with the Lord. And Jane and their family are on a getaway at uh, Cardinals game one last night and today two in a row and of course that was just jesse pulling some strings up there i'm sure he was a fan of whatever he was doing jesse was a fan didn't matter what he was involved in and again but uh that was just i'm sure god reaching down and comforting those folks at this time hard to believe a year's already passed by and so, some are back from vacation, some are back from hysterical trips to Washington, D.C. Do you, do you, did you learn anything in Washington, D.C.? What, what's, what's the biggest thing you learned about the Holocaust? Whoa, do you went to the museum then? Oh, my goodness, that'll rip your heart out. That, yeah, yeah, and we got, there's a dumb preacher in Arizona that says there is no, there was no Holocaust. I've been in the Holocaust Museum in Israel, and uh, my goodness, it, uh, if you ever get it to go to D.C. to go, I'm glad, what a first, that was a great first response. Did you say, Joe, my preacher said hello, Joe? Did you, didn't tell him hello? No. You know which Joe I'm talking about? Joe's Pizza. I'm right in there in D.C., my favorite place to eat. Yeah, <laughs> Caroline, I'll leave you alone. Quit picking on you. I'm glad you had a good time. What a great answer. Uh, I love it. I love it. I hope you do things with your young uns and, and take time to be with them. And I think it's important. It really is. I appreciate you all so much. Well, let's have a call to prayer, find a place, and ask God to speak to you tonight. Got a good Bible study for us tonight. I think it'll be a help and a challenge to our heart tonight. But come, and and the the winners come walking in at the let man. Did you drive a hundred miles an hour to get here? And yeah, how about that? And so. That's good time, and Miriam, we're glad you could pray tonight, and so <laughs> let's go to prayer.
Father, we're thankful we can come to you on bended knee and ask to hear from heaven. Lest you show up tonight, all will be in vain. Please bless and help and guide and direct and be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, appreciate it. I was just, Jane, your ears must have been burning as you were coming in. And I uh, was talking about Y'all getting a chance to get away and get two wins. I mean, how often is that? That's 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 why they're smiling. They're not smiling to be at church. They're smiling because they got two wins, and uh, it was fun. And I'm glad somebody still sits in the spitting section of the church. The rest of the churches, I was trying to get them to come closer, but anyways, I always spit right anyways, so. But appreciate it. Busy Brother Bryant's are up in Wisconsin enjoying themselves. I'm so glad he got a chance to get away. They went out on Lake Michigan this morning, coho fishing. They limited out. They went out of Kenosha, right out of the port where I grew up with in that area. And uh, how cool is that? They limited out and did real well. But they're enjoying themselves. And they'll be back uh, Friday. But I appreciate that they got to get away. Matt's gone next week. He flies out to catch up to his family. And so uh, you pray for these guys while they're gone. But yesterday, Matt and I went to Judah. Is that right? Judah, Wisconsin. And uh, in Judah, Wisconsin, we bought a 130-foot tall tower. You say, what are you going to do with a tower? Well, we're going to make Christmas trees out of the tower. We have a, in our light show is a 30-foot Christmas tree, 30 feet tall, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it, and uh, the uh, our engineer who is uh, guiding us through all that said we got the perfect. He couldn't believe we got it for how much we paid for it. Got it for next to nothing. It was a $10,000 tower to buy it. Uh, new, uh, and it's three years old, but it'll be Christmas trees is what will be the base, 130 foot, and then all the 10 footers will be uh, small bases for Christmas trees. It'll have pixel light strips that go down, and they'll be the dancing Christmas trees. And I posted that on Instagram, but they are Baptist dancers, so don't worry about it. They do a Baptist dance. And uh, so... Some Sunday I'll teach you that, but uh, you know, just have to keep coming. Anyways, I appreciate you, but uh, so much. And we are just to give you an update on the lights. Things are really coming together for that, and uh, it's gonna really have an impact on the community. The uh, uh, right now, getting ready to buy paper for our brochure. Austin, we're, we're getting ready to pull the trigger on that, eh? And uh, we're doing a, our, it's going to be $40,000 project pretty much. Are we in that area? Our brochure, which is a gospel track, but nobody knows it's a track because it's a, it's a tabletop brochure that has history of, of the fairgrounds, has the history of the racetrack, and in the back has the history of Christmas. And it has the gospel presentation we'll give to those that come. I love it. I love it. Because folks may not read it right then and there, but it's hidden in there. And uh, it won't get thrown away. It'll sit out. And just when somebody needs it, we're going to hear a testimony someday. I was heartbroken. I was hurt. I read uh, I was thinking I lost a loved one at Christmas time, and I was just thinking I remembered the history of Christmas. I read it, and I trusted Christ as my Savior. We'll get that testimony one day, and I look forward to that. That's the main thing for me. It really is, but but just a challenge. It's a challenge for me to see if we can pull it off. I dream it. Brother Bryant builds it, and that's how it goes. And Matt tears it things up. And so, uh, again, but we'll start setting up in October, opens in November. 
runs through the first week of January and then tear it all down, put it away. But uh, looking forward to it, a great fundraiser for our school. And I'm looking forward to God just blessing it all and uh, what we do. And, and you'll be thrilled at all that's going on. The pixel lights are amazing. A pixel can be a million different colors. One little light bulb can be that many different combinations. And uh, we have a half a million pixel lights. And they're put into boards, and they're all coordinated electronically by a computer program. And then they, they write, Alyssa is working with our engineers. Uh, uh, what do they call it when they uh, put the lights to music? Uh, sequencing. So Alyssa's learning to sequence the music to the lights so that they respond. There's three different areas that'll have music and lights going, and it's just exciting to be a part of it. Our, really, our uh, area's never seen anything like it before. And uh, uh, again, if I think you're doing something for the Lord, you better do it first class, do it right, and let it have an impact. And folks won't come once, folks will come multiple times. And there's a few games that go on, Finding Rudolph, like Where's Waldo? There'll be Rudolph's hit all over through the whole thing, and I just uh, all kinds of things going on. You come in and get hot chocolate or apple cider and giant cookies. I've been sampling cookies. And uh, uh, again, wherever we go, we're sampling different cookies that we want to make. and. Uh, and do that and so that's part of it but a lot of fun things going on with that I, I pray about one thing my animatronic ghost of Christmas past I'm having trouble getting him built now he's the Grinch he's the face of the Grinch he's green he has a green cape he's 12 feet tall and I want him I'm, I want him to come out to people and then turn either way, but every time I ask for them to make something, they add dollars onto it. I don't know what their problem is. So I think I, he might just stand up and sit down, <laughs> my first one, but he'll be able to talk, or somebody can talk. He can be animated, or, or where he automatically talks, or somebody can be inside of him and talk through a microphone. And uh, someone pulls in in a Mercedes and you say, Do you, would you like us to call a tow truck? I don't think that car will make it through here. And kind of trash talk. My wife doesn't like that idea, but I sure would like to be the Grinch in there. But that's kind of the things that we're trying to add. That's getting less and less uh, reality for this year, but there's always next year. But uh, fun stuff that goes on in there, and a few laser tunnels, an enchanted forest. The enchanted forest has all these spotlights under the trees, and Brother Bryant's putting a fog into that area. If you're listening, Brother Bryant, aren't you putting a fog in there? And so that the light has something to reflect off, not only the trees, but the fog. And that's to music. Then there you go through a area that's all military, honoring all the branches of the military. Then you cross between two ponds and you have all the first responders. That area, then you go to a uh, winter wonderland area. Then you go through a farming section and then you go through a sports section. They're even going to put the cardinals in our light show. Yeah. And we have uh, the, the Cubs, the Cardinals, and the White Sox all in, in one area. That ought to be funny. And then all, all the high schools are going to be represented in that area with lights. And then you come out of that area into cartoon characters through the pits, around the pits, into movies, then into the racetrack. We have, we're building televisions on the fence that are eight, four by eight sheets of, of uh, pixel lights right next to you. A television, all the television is, Will, you were uh, telling me that day, they're just 
all next little lights next to each other, and so we make the cars can be going across the fence like there's cars racing in there. And a year ago, Brother Bryant and I bought out a haunted houses sound system. It was it's a ton. You put it away. There's a bunch of amplifiers and speakers and all kinds of stuff that we'll put out in that area. Then you come out of that area and Santa's being pulled by the, the track champions and then uh, his sleigh on the, on the television and then you go out into the dancing Baptist Christmas trees and uh, uh, with a 30 foot Christmas tree out in that area and then you exit through another laser tunnel. So. I'm glad you got to go on the drive through light show with me tonight. So it's, it's no small thing. It's no little small thing. Uh, we don't have a string of lights on a building and invite people to come. It's major, major. So pray for us. Pray for that. The school is the beneficiary of it, and I really love that part of it. And so, uh, again, we're hoping to ease... Um, uh, candy selling for 2023 wouldn't it be nice to have no candy sale 2023 would you like that what else do we sell just that all right so what pies I don't I'd be in trouble if we quite stop that one or at least I wouldn't get what I wanted <laughs> at holidays so We'll keep that going, but anyways, appreciate you all so much. Uh, give me a chance to tell you a little bit about that. Grab your songbooks, let's sing. All right, let's sing song number 522, The Banner of the Cross, number 522. We'll sing the first and the fourth verse. There's a royal banner given for display to the soldiers of the king as an ensign fair we lift it up today while as ransomed ones we sing marching on marching on for christ count everything but loss and to crown Number four, when the glory dawns, is drawing very near. It is hastening day by day. Then before our King, the foe shall disappear, and the cross the world shall sway. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss, and to crown him King, toil and Neath the banner of the cross. All right, our announcements this evening. Uh, those going to junior camp, please don't forget, uh, leaving the church here Monday, June the 6th, uh, around 1030 in the morning. So make sure you're here, make sure you're on time for that. And they'll be back Friday, June the 10th. And don't forget the cost, $110 per camper there. If you have any questions about that, you can see Brother Austin. Also, the Ladies' Fellowship sign-up sheet is back there by the back door going to Joy Ye Noodles on Saturday, June the 11th uh, at 3 p.m. Cost is $5 for fuel and then whatever money you're going to spend for your meal there. As well as don't forget the sign-up sheet uh, for the Grow and Grace Bible Study starting up on June the 6th at 7 o'clock. Uh, make sure you get signed up for that as well. Teenagers, don't forget, if you haven't signed up for the youth conference yet, please do that quickly so they can get all the registration done um, that way for that. And the dates for that are June 20th through the 23rd. Also, our prayer opportunities for the week. Our preacher of the week is Pastor Jonathan Reiser over in Princeton, Indiana. Our missionary of the week is Robert Keaton with the Rock of Ages Prison Ministry. Uh, the Friends of Our Ministry is Country Companies here in town with Kevin DeRossett. And our minister of the week is the College and Career Class. All right, let's stand together again, and we're going to turn to song number 56. Number 56, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Number 5, 6, Stand with me, and we'll sing the first and the third verse. On the first, Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest 
that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings to earth. Tell me the story of Jesus, right on my heart every Number three, tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the cross that laid him, tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me faithful in our giving let's remember the tithe is the lord's it's to our part to give to faith promise missions to the building program together we grow we we'll hopefully have the ceiling done by football camp i'm excited about that and once the ceiling's done we'll put uh, the carpet down and uh, we're gearing up to have all that tile laid and all that done that gives us about two months to get it done and we're digging in this summer into it every day and even in the evening. So pay attention at all the opportunities you can help out. But let's be faithful in our giving. Again, I appreciate our young men in our church. I appreciate young men that will start a business. And I hope, listen to me, I hope you as a church will support Quick Dry and his endeavor. Uh, there to uh, the quick dry business if you have carpets that need to get done get them done help him while it's slow before it gets crazy he's going to be very very busy in days to come but i want you to help him and support him and it, i'm gonna tell you he did the auditorium old auditorium and we had done it several times the stains were removed uh, no other process the same with the learning center not every stain gone because uh, teenage boys live in there once for a week and that stain does not remove <laughs> but they got pretty close to it without cutting the carpet out <laughs> or wearing it out but uh, they work very hard so I want you to support uh, and be a part and uh, again Let's not be guilty of not helping a young man get started because he's a giver. He's a giver, and you better understand that. He gives and is a blessing, gives of his time. And we had him, I'm taking time today because we had a meeting. He meets with his preacher. Just say, preacher, I want you to point me in the right direction, make sure I'm doing this and that. And, and uh, that's impressive for a young man. To, to come I don't I don't know it all but I do know a little been around the block a few times and and so he's got a good head on his shoulders would you give thanks for the offering please
Thank you, thank you, ladies. I enjoyed that. That was a blessing. Again, I'm excited about several things with BTI, and, and of course, they have named the studio, Paul Levine Studio, is that correct? And uh, I, I'm a, I just was jumped out of my skin almost when you, I should have jumped out of the fat under the skin, but uh, uh, I, I just was so excited that, that I, I had not heard exactly what they were going to call it, and I'm excited about that, and they got several projects going, but one of the projects Mike has talked with me about is doing a, a just before I'm dead and gone, do a CD of my own, just with simple songs from my heart. And so, uh, of course, I have my own piano player and uh, Miss Lydia play, and uh, we work out, have some fun with that. I have several people gonna sing. I've been, Mike had me to work, he actually laid it all out for me. Uh, he said, begin to build a list of songs and who you wanna sing with and what you wanna do. And man, I like some of the songs. You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog is the name of the album. Very convicting. And then uh, it's got a teenage song. It's all because your mama don't dance and your daddy don't rock and roll. And that's the second song. It's okay to laugh, folks. I'm just cutting up, you know. Don't go stiff on me. All right. But uh, anyways, I have a little Elvis in there. Uh, we'll leave that alone. Take your Bibles and turn to Galatians. Galatians, if you will, chapter 5. One of Elvis' songs that popped in my head, I, I almost said it. Oh. Uh, And if I say any of them, you'll start singing them to yourselves, some of you old, old timers in this room. And uh, so we, I want you to focus on the Word of God tonight. We are in a Bible study in the book of Galatians. We're Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Let's begin reading. Read along with me in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of them, uh, or uh, such like of the which I tell you before, as I have, told, have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Tonight, I want to speak to you on this subject, the disposition of the heart is Christian character. The disposition of the heart is Christian character. The Christian life is not a set of, of acts. It's a disposition of the heart. It, it, we, don't, we don't try to perform all of these things to be a Christian or to even be a good Christian. But it's from the heart. It's not a, the Christian life is not a bunch of do's and don'ts. Although they're laid out to us in a way that we can understand that which is good and that which is bad. That which is needful and helpful against that which is hurtful and harsh. But this, the Christian life is from the heart. The disposition of the heart means the prevailing tendency, mood, or inclination. What is, what is your heart inclined to? What, is, what prevails in situations when you come up against opposition? What is your tendency or 
your mood today? Well, somebody going, is he in a good mood or a bad mood today? Is she in a good mood or a bad mood today? Our inclination is what what we're inclined to be like. What 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 is the, really the status quo for us? Turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter one, real quick. All this by way of introduction. Colossians chapter one, just over a few chapters. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10. It says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Our walk as a Christian, Bob Jones Sr. said this, your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. And that's the truth. I've seen it in my lifetime. People say a lot of things and then do just the opposite. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That is such a convicting statement unto me that all that I do in my life is it pleasing to the Lord. Is my attitude here towards this person pleasing to the Lord? I, I Believe me, I do not stand up here tonight as if I have achieved some type of perfection in my life. I fail miserably on every point. But in my heart there's a desire There's a desire, and that desire overcomes all so often the faults and the failures. Being fruitful in every good work. Well, I want to be fruitful. We we find, but the fruit of the Spirit in verse 22, and, and 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 that's the second half of this message. And increasing in the knowledge of God. To know God. To, to know him. And the Bible says in the power of his resurrection. Do we, do, do, do we as a church know him? And trust him? Do we know him? Do we know him? I know this. There's people I know and I say this. I can depend on them people. I know them. I can depend on them. My dad had all kinds of funny sayings. And he'd meet somebody and he'd say about a certain man, he'd say, he'd be good to ride the river with. And then he'd meet a lady and said, yeah, she'd be good to ride the river with. One day I just couldn't wrap my mind around what he was talking about. I said, Daddy, do you ride the river very often? What, what are you talking about? And, I just, and he said, son, I'm talking about those are good people. I could trust them to do their part, to carry their load, to help. And if ever I was on the river, he got a little perturbed and I asked him for clarification. But I heard him say it many times about people. But How seldom do we say, I know him. I know him. I love this song. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. The only way we're going to know him is if we walk with him. Talk with him. And that's how it comes out. The disposition of the heart of the character of the Christian life comes from knowing him. And that's not the message. That's the introduction. Let's bow for prayer. We'll get into the study tonight. Father, help us, I pray. 
they lay a foundation for what the result of not knowing him and not depending upon him, the fruit of it. Father, help us not to be that type of Christian all across America, our people that put on the dog when it comes to being a Christian. They act the part, but when no one's looking. And there's a flaw in their character, Christian character, Lord. May that not be said of us. Bless now tonight, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. First, as we look into uh, verse 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now the manifest means come to life. They're, they're, they've seen, it's come out, can be seen very openly. Paul first gives us a list of the works of the flesh. It is not a complete list, but it's very comprehensive. Here is a statement of its fruit, the fruit of the flesh. It's not the kind of fruit we as Christians want to have. If tonight as I teach and talk about this different fruit and it's manifest in your life, you better do something about it because you don't want the end result. Here are four classifications of sins of the flesh. It's broken down into four areas. First, the sins of sensuality. The sins of sensuality. We first, uh, uh, these four are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery. What is adultery? It's a violation of the marriage bed. It's when one is unfaithful in marriage, it's a committing of adultery. You know, the world wants to call it, we had an affair, like we went to the fair and it was a carnival and everything was wonderful. No, God calls it adultery. Unfaithfulness. Fornication. These are things, the sins of the flesh. Fornication is a relationship with an unmarried person when a person is married. Again, the Bible condemning this of the flesh. Fourth is uncleanness. Things that go against the word of God. Unclean for a child of God unfalls under this. It is, is again the 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 lesbianism, the homosexuality, the beastology, all of these nasty things going on in our day. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6 and... Verse 9. Verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators or adulterers or adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind by effeminate. I was, my wife records programs I like to see and one is barbecue brawl with, uh, I like Bobby Flay. And, and I, like, I like what they do and, 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 and they, there's an effeminate judge. He's an effeminate, He's, he dresses effeminate, he talks effeminate. Uh, and, and by the way, you have a young, Boy, teach him to talk like a man. Teach him to shake a hand like a man. Oh, don't, oh. <laughs> I get the heebie-jeebies I get around them people. Feminine, the Bible 
addresses it right here and now, nor views it of himself with mankind, that's beastology, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, washed. Hello, that's the opposite of unclean. We're clean. We're clean. I like it. But be ye, but ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. All things are not are uh, are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are not lawful for me, but uh, I will not be brought under the power of any. Uh, again, uncleanness, a manifestation of the flesh, lasciviousness. It's a looseness, an indulgence. The lascivious are, are these that are into beastology. And by the way, it's having sex with animals, and I'm trying to be appropriate uh, tonight, but it's the truth. It's sick, sad, and sorry. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Verse 14, Ephesians chapter 4 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed through it to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive but speak the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together compacted by that uh, which every uh, joint supplieth according to the effectual working in his measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to, here it is, unto the lascivious, lasciviousness, to the working of all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not, so learned Christ. Well, I'll tell you, when these things manifest themselves, folks, there's something wrong spiritually. Now I'm going to say this, any child of God is capable of doing anything at any time. None of us are void from anything. It's just... You're one decision away from the sins of the flesh. But it's character of the heart. You show me what your way you're leaning, what you're drawn to, and I'll show you what way you're going to fall. It's real simple. Secondly, I want you to see the second set are sins connected with heathenism as a religion. Turn back, if you will, to Galatians chapter 5. So in verse 19, we saw these uh, uh, sensual sins. But in verse 20, you have adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. And so here... We, we see the violation of the, uh, it's, it's here 
we see idolatry. Idolatry is putting anything before God. By the way, you can put your children before God and it's idolatry. Would some of you wake up and realize your kids are going to be grown and gone one day (laughs) and the world doesn't revolve around them? They're going to grow up and it's going to just be you and mama. Brother Angel was texting me some themes for the the, the, uh, couples retreat. And uh, he he said... um, he, he got into several things about tying the knot or the knot. And I text back, I have a great theme. We're all knotted up, let's just leave it that way. <laughs> so I was cutting up on that. And I, I, I text him, let's tie a knot and hang on. And when we get to the end of our rope, and uh, we were laughing, and he texts back, are you on drugs? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just, I text him a whole bunch of crazy uh, I think he was trying to be serious, and, and I wasn't. But uh, uh, again, it's so, it's so easy to forget. We better be working on that relationship with God, which ultimately keeps everything else in its place. Secondly, we see witchcraft. So here we see in verse 20 two things, idolatry and witchcraft. Sins connect with heathen religion. Witch, witchcraft. Second Samuel 15, 23, you do not turn there, says, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as uh, iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord and he has also rejected thee. From being king. Uh, listen to me. Witchcraft, rebellion. It cost, the rebellion cost King Saul everything his kingdom, his family. He was tied to the temple of Dagon and desecrated. See, this is what sins of the flesh lead to. You you young people, you want to play with rebellion. You're playing with witchcraft when you get rebellious. Let me say something to you, some of you ladies. You get rebellious, you're playing with witchcraft. You're opening doors. The Bible tells us that he that breaketh down the hedge and diggeth the pit shall be bit by the serpent. Some of you men become rebellious about things. Your wife tries to be sensible. And by the way, you some of you rebellious men, you better learn to listen to them. My wife has kept me out of so much trouble. Hello. I thank God for her. Rebellion. There's so much witchcraft, witchcraft going on in our day. We have no idea. We have no idea. And Christians playing with that. Someone called me the other day, not not a part of our church, but called me. said, Preacher, tell me, Matt, you were with me. Uh, Totem pole. Is that, are totem poles wicked? I said, it depends on several factors. I said, why are you thinking about getting a totem pole? And she goes, no, but my mother wants one. I said, Is it, if it's wicked, I'm not getting her one. She's already wicked enough. Who said to me? Totem pole. Now, I said, if it's, if it's carved out by a spiritist, yes, I would be very leery of it. Uh, if it had Indian symbolic things of the spirit world, I would be leery of it. If it, but 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 if a woodcarver just carved a totem pole, it's a it's a work of art. So so what? But 
it's still one of those iffy things. But, but we're, we're playing in the spirit world. I don't want anything to do with the spirit world. I went, I went through my house, and I, there's a, I probably need to preach on it again to clean your house, get all the demonic things that are tied to the demons of hell out of your house. Sometimes the toys we give our kids are demonic symbols of toys, and, and you better know what you're doing. You better know what you put. And, and then people wonder why their kids get all screwed up and they don't obey. I'm very careful, especially some of the goofball stuff they come out with today. Being careful. Again, this, the fruits of the flesh. Thirdly, the third category is the violation of the law of love and feelings and how we act. So we, we had the first two, adultery, and then hatred and variance and emulation and wrath and strife and seditions and heresies. So we see here hatred. That's a strong word. I hate you. It's a word that should never be used by a child of God, especially towards another. That's strong. That's a work of the flesh. Here, John R. Rice said this, when boiled down to essence, unforgiveness is hatred. When I first read that, you know, there are things we must hate. I think we ought to have a hatred for sin. Uh, People get upset because I get angry about sin. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Thank God you have an old-timey preacher that gets mad about a few things going on out there, throws a bull-eyed fit about some things. We better be careful. This thing of hatred. I've heard many young persons say, I hate my mother. I hate my father. I'll tell you a story that was told to me by a school administrator. Young girl on the way to school got into it with her mother over some trivial, silly thing. Mother pulled up to the Christian school to drop her off. Before she got out of the car, she says, I hate your guts. Slammed the door and went into the school. Well, about 15 minutes into school, a school principal got a call and it was not good news and he called this young girl down to his office and said, now, um, I have some bad news for you. I said, he said, your mother dropped you off and as she got out to go on the highway was T-boned and killed just a short time ago. And that girl began to scream and squall and carry on. My last words to my mother was, I hate your guts. I'll never be able to take those words back again. And she squalled for, I'm talking for a long period of time, the school administrator told me. And there seemingly was no way she could be comforted. But her sin of the flesh. Uh, I've had caskets that I've preached over, and I'll sit to the side and watch, or be at a funeral home, and I watch people approach that casket. And, and they, they come by, and of course in ours they come this way, and so they would come uh, this way of greeting the, the family, or, or they may be the family. 
and, and I've seen them, and I could see it. There's no regret. No regret. <laughs> when I came by my daddy's casket, there was no regret. Only, only thoughts of joy. <laughs> only, only great memories of laughter. When my dad died, I think from heaven, he said, my son's crying, would you tell him a joke? And my dad told thousands of jokes. I mean, more jokes. He beat Brian Sharp three times in a joke-telling contest. That's where you start to tell the joke, and before the joke is done, you have to tell. He told so many jokes. And when he died, I got a joke from heaven that came that he had told me years ago. I know regrets. But boy, I've seen people go by here and weep and squall and bawl and hear the words, oh, if I would have only, oh, I, eh. and you've seen it. And some of you under the sound of my voice have seen it. Hello? I want to face that one day with no regret. How important it is we understand. So we see, secondly, variance. Variance is an alteration of that which is truth or that which was established, making a, in, 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 in our area, when we uh, built out in the country, there had to be a variance for us to build out there, set to make sure that the land that we bought had a housing permit assigned to it. And there wasn't one. It was actually assigned out to across the very front on Verona Road. And so they did a variance and put Brother Bryant's and myself two off of that area into that area to make the sale happen. But it, it, it deals here in the Word of God with making changes in the word of God. Changing beliefs. I'm going to say I've been here 38 years and, and I haven't changed what I believe in 38 years. I'm still old timey just the way I was when I first came. Oh, I, the truth is I've gotten a lot stronger. I've gotten a lot stronger because I've learned more of the Word of God and I've gotten stronger. But boy, I've watched, I've watched young men change. Throw the standards out. Throw the soul winning out. Music, bring in that happy, clappy music and think God's going to bless that. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I like this in verse 3. Here again in Philippians chapter 2. And, and, and verse 2, let's go there. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind each esteem others better than themselves. Looking every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Variances. Emulations. Talk about emulations. Strife. Rivalry to make one seek or look better than someone else. That's what emulation is. Tearing somebody. The corporate world lives in emulations. Tear everyone around you down to make you look better, to climb the ladder. That's not Bible. Here, here it is. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. If that's going on around you, as a Christian, let it, let it happen. Don't you get caught up in that. 
wrath, his violent temper or indignation. Ephesians chapter 4, turn back if you will, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 and verse, oh, 26, Ephesians chapter 4. It says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. I was watching Laura Ingram last night. I'm not a big Fox News fan. I, I like One News America, and they've taken it off DirecTV. And I'm not a big Newsmax fan either. But I like Laura Ingram. Uh, and, and I do. I like I like uh, her approach to things and dealing with things. And uh, but but she nailed this pot smoking crowd. The violence. They're saying they're saying that the smoking of marijuana has been tied to every one of these mass shootings because it breeds. Listen to me. It breeds violence. And that's not being talked about anywhere. As a matter of fact, Laura Ingram was the first one that I heard. I've read several articles on it, but she's the first national person ever to say anything. And, and, and she was asking the questions, why? Why? Why the anger and the violence? Oh, I know why. It's those guns. Those guns are so angry. They just sit there angry at those bullets. They're so angry. Every bullet. You can get a more angry bullet than another bullet if you like. What a bunch of hooey. Now, we're going to outlaw all 9 millimeter handguns. Our president doesn't even know what a 9... Your president doesn't even know what a 9 millimeter is. I would say that one guy is one French fry short of a Happy Meal, but he doesn't even have any French fries. He got a Happy Meal that's just an empty box. Strife. Contention for superiority. I'm right and you're wrong. Strife. The Bible says only by pride cometh contention. In my, own, in my own house, when there's contention between Cindy and I, I go, Lord, where, where is the pride in my life? It's a manifestation of the flesh. There's no place for this as a Christian. Uh, I, again, you Ephesians, or I'm sorry, Philippians uh, chapter 2 and, and verse 3 applies here again. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, each esteem others better than themselves. Have we lost that esteeming others better than themselves, ourselves? Seditions. Seditions. It is a rising of rage towards another. Someone that just gets under your skin and gets you going and it gets to build up until finally it blows up. You know, we, we as children of God, we don't let people get under our skin. My Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Don't let the devil mess with you and let people mess with you. Now listen to me. I'm an old street fighter. Becca FaceTimed me today and she found a can of whoop -em. It's not what it said, but it was a can of whoop -em. She said, she had Emmy say, Papa can, I buy, Papa, can I buy this for you? You're all out of these. Mommy said you don't have any more. <laughs> and that was on, on uh, what, what, 
Marco Polo. They were Marco Polo and me. And, and it kind of caught me off guard that my granddaughter had that in her hand. And, and so I texted him and said, you better buy a case of them. See if they're cheaper. But, but, but listen to me, I can't be that way. We're preachers not to be a brawler. Now, but listen to me, I can mix it up, but it's still, I'm, I just have one punch. I've, I've developed one punch. That's all I got, one punch. But it'll be a good one. But I, but I don't look for that. I don't, I don't let people get under my skin. I don't let things bother me and get shook up. The Lord knows all about it. Next was heresies. An adherence to a religious opinion contrary to the word of God. Heresies. There's a crowd of independent Baptists that followed a wacko out in Arizona, I mean a whack job, Stephen Anderson. Preacher I know followed, just hooked right in with him and he got burnt and, and woke up and got some of his, got with an older preacher and got his doctrine straight. By the way, that's why, uh, as a young preacher, I, I, I I'm a, I'm going to shoot straight public. I didn't get a lot of my doctrine from Hiles Anderson College. I got my doctrine from Uncle Mel Rudder at the table at night when I was with him. I got my doctrine from, from, from being uh, again with Brother Garris and sitting down at that Bible and getting the solid doctrine of the Bible. I got it from Brother Jim Vineyard Doctrine. I love being around the old men of God. We learn our doctrine at the, as a night fighter. A night fighter is one who studies at the table, the kitchen table at night when everybody else goes to sleep, Matt and studies that old book and, and gets along with God and begins to, to see things and understand things for himself, lest one get caught off in heresies. How these young guys could follow an idiot like that. Lastly, the fourth area is sins of intemperance. Intemperance means lack of moderation habitual or excessive or indulgence. So, so we see here, as, as we look at these, uh, again, in verse 21, it, of course, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before. Again, envying. What, what in the world are we to envy people for when heaven is our home? The people be so caught up that they could, in hatred and all these other things, they could murder somebody. Listen, kids today, they don't think not about shooting somebody. They don't, boo, boo, they, they, have, they're, they're, they don't care. They have no thought that they're taking a life. They don't even understand what life is. Sins of in, indulgence, excessive drunkenness, reveling. That's what you, yeah, you have all this found in Black Lives Matter movement across America when they were lawlessness, with all the lawlessness that took place. And in reality, that, that whole organization doesn't matter. 
all life matters. You're going to act lawless. You need to be put in prison and punished for breaking the law. But, but of course, our Democrats were bailing them out of jail, sending them on to the next city. How corrupt and sick this country is. In closing, there's far too much intemperance in Christianity today. People think they can live any way they want to live because they're under grace. You see, the Christian life, this, the standard for how we live the Christian life goes back to Colossians 1.10, unto all pleasing. The Christian life is lived in the heart in the heart. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll be done tonight. and I'll get into the second half of the fruit of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. I like this. For the love of Christ, verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which, are, which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Therefore henceforth we, I'm sorry, therefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we, uh, we henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are of God who reconciled unto us himself, unto Jesus Christ, has given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God ha uh, did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Behold, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Stephen Ray Nichols has become a dear friend. Brother Austin, you introduced me to him, and uh, through a song we used, and we've become very dear friends. He calls, he texts me every other day a picture, some funny picture, political picture, or whatever. We laugh and and uh, whatnot, but uh, and text back and forth. But he was talking to me today. He said, he said, super. I said, uh huh. He said, you know who I've been with? No. Ooh. Of course, that's from my preacher. And, and, and uh, so he said, yeah, your preacher told me about when he, when, when he sat on your doorstep at night. And he said, I want to hear your side of it. And I said, well, man, he was mean to me. Pulled my beard, pulled my hair took my cigarettes from me, said, are you going to waste your life? And he said, yeah, that's what your preacher said he did. <laughs> but thank God, thank God there was a preacher that said, hey, don't quit. Don't go back into that junk. Oh, what are you doing? And, and, and by the way, that night I threw my cigarettes. So that, well, I didn't throw them away. He threw them away. I just said, no more. That night I said, uh, and that, that night he said, you need to move down to Illinois. I was a Wisconsin boy, did not want to. Illinois greasers, that's what we called you folks. Now I am one. 
but but uh, again, he said you need to move down by the church, closer to the church, and get away from your old friends. That 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 I I had good intentions. I went to witness to all my friends. That that Friday night, the guy said, "Come on, Woody." That and that's what Woody died after. But they called my friends. All called me Woody. Come on, Woody, let's go. Hey, I don't do that. I don't drink. Oh, come on, just have a coke. We'll drink. Come on, just drink cokes. We'll have fun, talk, laugh, and tell stories. Come on, come on. Well, the the bad thing is I drank rum and coke. And and coke is not very far away from adding rum to it, and it doesn't look like it has been added. And there came a rum and coke, and that was it, man. It, put me into a tailspin as and 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 really a, a struggle and thank God my preacher was there when I came home and said hey are you going to waste your life I was a, I was a prodigal Met, but one of the last times I messed up thank God for a preacher that was there to help me and remind me that I'm a new creature. Those old things have to die. They have to pass away. I'm going to tell you about these things of the flesh. They have to pass away. We got to bury them. They got to die. You can't. But even your language. Got to be careful. This, by by the way, way too much Christian slang going on. Some of you mean mamas better get mean and start hammering that slang junk being said in the house. Well, my mother rode roughshod over slang. You know, we're we're using the Christian F word. Come on. Come on, folks. All that leads you back into the flesh. I want to live in the spirit. It's keeping your heart going the right way. And that keeps you going the right way. We come to verse 22. I love, I love this. And, but the fruit of the Spirit. But don't give up hope. The fruit of the Spirit. And you'll have to come back next Wednesday for that. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're to keep our heart right. How are you doing tonight? That old flesh, that old fruit of the flesh cropping up as the Spirit of God dealt with you tonight. With heads bowed and eyes closed, say, Preacher, pray for me. There's some things tonight God dealt with my heart about. Slip it up, put it down. God bless you all around the room. Right in your seat, make an altar out of your seat. Dear Lord, help me. All of us stumble and fall. Our goal is to not make it so often. Make them further and few and far between. Sometime it may take a preacher sitting on the porch. But it shouldn't be that every week. You know, you parent yourself in the church when it's time to be in church. I don't miss. By the way, I fear this Facebook stuff where people can slip out of church and not get back in. Well, I just want to watch it on live stream. That's the thing I rebelled about it from the get-go. Assembling of ourselves together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together still in the book. It's not about looking somebody in the eyeball and hearing the message. Father, you know the hearts, I pray, that we take heed to the challenge of what the flesh will do to us and that we'll 
look forward and even look with anticipation to the fruit of the Spirit. Father, bless now. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to be dismissed tonight. Thank you for coming and being here tonight. I appreciate you being in your place. Again, let's have a good weekend, a good Sunday coming up. And uh, again, vacations are starting. You can fill in where there's a hole and help and be a blessing. Brother Ed, let's sing. Let's talk about Jesus in closing prayer. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of kings is he. The Lord of lords supreme. we've had on these uh, uh, these just areas we do not want to get into in our lives. I pray, God, that you'd help us to remember where you brought us from, and I pray, God, that you'd help us not to go back to those areas in at any uh, part of our life. I pray, God, that you would help us to walk in the fruit of the Spirit instead. I pray, God, you'd be with us now as we leave. Bring us back together on Sunday, and we ask in Jesus' name, amen.